I really look at that and I kind of say, you know, maybe I could, I could say people less fortunate than I am, or people who maybe might be as fortunate or even more fortunate than I am, I can say that, you know, Jesus died for, you know, really everybody in that sense. So whoever loves Jesus, you know, believes that he died on the cross for their sins, you know, forgive it. But besides that, you know, I'm going to ask you guys a question. I don't want to put you on the spot, but just, just to say it, what is your, I want to say, I want to say uh, faith, I want to say relationship with uh, Jesus. What is your relationship with Jesus? I know you heard it a lot, but just like for you, it's okay, whatever you say, it's, it's, it's going to be on camera, but it's going to be confidential still, so yeah. Uh, who wants to go first? You don't, you know, have to worry about it. If you have an answer, you know, it's okay. That's okay. What is the question? Is Jesus true? Well, yeah, what is your relationship with Jesus? Yeah. Wow. My relationship with Jesus is that he's my all in all, he's my everything. He's my provider, he's my caretaker, my way maker. Um, without him, I wouldn't be where I am today. Okay. Well said. Awesome. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Okay. Um, you know, when that question comes up, I think I'm answering my own myself. You know, there there are many things Jesus can be for you. He can be your redeemer, your way maker. He can be your savior. He can be he can be your Lord. So, in a sense, I can say he's my Lord and Savior. I can say, yeah, it was my redeemer, my way maker. Uh, a lot of these things, there's a lot of names for Jesus. You can say, I am uh, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, the Son of Man. Uh, I'm the way maker, uh, the lily in the valley, the Prince of Peace. So he's a lot of things. And you know that for a lot of different people. So if you really hear a lot of different people, what they think about Jesus, you can, you can come to know, you know what he means for them and what he means for you. Because some people need Jesus. He's their all in everything. Like, they literally are on the street begging for money, but they still love God. They're, they're not really complaining, you know, hey, God made me poor. He took away my family. There's some people who are more fortunate, I hear, that actually do that. They, they always vent to God, and they curse Him every time they think about Him because they had somebody maybe died of cancer or died of these diseases, and they think that God is the one that killed them. So in that sense, you look at it and say, is God, what is he to them? Is he the enemy? Is he what Satan is to me? Or Because I had actually had a conversation, I think, uh, with uh, somebody, and for them, I think they were, they were literally bitter at God. They they'd, uh, they'd, um, sort of blamed him for a lot of the, uh, a lot of the bad that happened in their lives. So... When I look at what he means to me and I compare it to maybe somebody who has maybe gone through a really bad time, I can say I understand how they're bitter about it, but at the same time, I'm, I'm also thinking to myself, have they been, you know, really studying, you know, who this one is, who Jesus is? But I think they look at it and they just, they just remind themselves, you know, that their lives are really terrible, they can say. Uh, so, I, I, I really want to base my relationship with Jesus not on the fact that, you know, my life is going well, but in the fact that I really just, I love the Lord. That's what I want to say. So, I really kind of answered this, the, the next question. I kind of went on a tangent there. I apologize. But, uh, it's the, um, how did you come to know the Lord Jesus? Um, yeah. Okay. I want to say I was raised in it, you know, it's like, uh, what is it, what's the term, osmosis or something like that? Okay, the, the term uh, I want to use, I, I want to say I was, yeah, raised in a Christian home, but I want to say also that my relationship itself, when it started, I want to say, you can even look at the preteen age, so maybe you can even say a bit older than you. Maybe you can say a bit younger. I'm not really sure. But it was probably around your ages, you know? Because when you really, I think, you, I think you read the Bible, it's very important, and you pray, 
I'm not going to say you have to fast for 19 days, read the Bible every second, every minute, every day. Just whenever you get the time, you know. And it, and it really helps you, you know, with history because there's a lot of historical facts in the Bible. I know I kind of just bored everybody because, like, historical facts, they're not fun. But, you know, it's really interesting to connect the Bible and then connect it with history because some people want to say, I know in middle school, high school, they always want to claim, oh, the Bible is just a fictitious book, you know. Uh, but the facts are, the Bible is an actual historical depiction of what actually happened. So they're not just made up stories. Think about it 100% real. Like, Jonah actually got swallowed by that whale, you know. The Red Sea actually parted. They're like, what? Noah's Ark actually happened. That many uh, animals went on the ship. So they're going to ask you these questions, you know. Friends are going to ask you these questions. So if you really know from the Bible or and connect it with history, they'll be really impressed with you. So that's kind of how you can make friends using the Bible. Not that I uh, would say I would recommend. That's how you would come up to make friends. But it's really cool. So, ah, uh, man. Okay. Um, and we have five minutes, and then we'll just do a Q&A. And then we do the prayer. So we're, we're very good on time here. Uh, the last question I'm seeing is how uh, do I handle distractions? And uh, it's also about study tips. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with the distractions first. Okay. So. What's the two ways you can get distracted? Just two ways. What's two ways you can get distracted? I, well, the two, the two general ways you can get distracted. The first way is you can get distracted out of something, like out of your focus, out of your zone. You're doing your homework, something distracts you, and then you get focused out of it. Or you can get distracted in something. So what that distraction means it's distracting you from your purpose. So let's say your purpose, you know, you kind of want to be uh, in itself. You want to be like a top student or whatever like that. But let's say you hang out with some friends. They distract you from doing some, you know, good things in your school. Maybe you're out, out doing some troublesome things, you know, sometimes. So that could be like a distraction, you know, out of something. So... The first way to avoid the distraction, like if you're trying to go do your homework or whatever, sometimes you have to distance yourself from the distraction, uh, get enough space from it. That way, you know, you won't be tempted to really use the thing like a device maybe. Or maybe it could be a person. And when it's a person trying to distract you, well, all I can say is you have to put the phone on mute maybe or... Sometimes you just got to try to try to do things that might be scheduled differently because if you're hanging around near the skate park and you know some friends are going to be there, you can choose the day that you do hang out with them and then the other day you go to the library maybe and you some study some stuff. So that can be how you can avoid that distraction. And then the last thing is the distraction, you know that's you know, out of what you want, your purpose. And I'm not just talking about the friends part, because I'm saying, this is gonna sound very foreign to you, but I'm saying like, when you grow up, you're gonna find like other types of distractions, like, you know, other types of alcohol, the drugs, and the other things. So those types of distractions are like, uh, those are the kind of things where you, you probably really need Jesus, because you know, some of this you can't go with your own willpower, but you have to go with, you know, the Lord. So in that sense, I, I would say trust God and also distance yourself from those things as best you can. But the Lord has a prayer. It's the Lord's prayer. And it says, deliver us from evil. Uh, okay, let me go back from uh, the beginning. Uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not to temptation. Well, I, I, I missed the, the destiny of those. But lead us not to temptation, 
is it very important every day to pray that because temptation it, it comes a lot and I'm talking also about sin as well temptation sins and all that stuff so if you say Lord lead me not to temptation deliver me from evil that, that prayer really helps so besides that alright guys I've talked so long I've talked so long so do you have any questions like any questions it doesn't have to be about school like like, like, what's my favorite video game? Like, all that kind of thing. No, can you think of If you have one of those types of questions, please ask them now. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, well, if I had to change one thing, man, I would say this. No... That's a really good question. At first, I would have said no poverty, you know, no people being poor. But I understand that some people, if they had a decision with a lot of money, they would use it to hurt people, or maybe they used to hurt themselves. They, they use the money in the wrong way. So I couldn't say poverty is one important thing. But another thing is, I would have everybody know, everybody know they're here with a purpose. They're not just here to spend, you know, waste time you know, being depressed, stressed, and, uh, fearful, and all that stuff. So I'd say, if I had one thing to do, I'd make everybody just see what it's like to be another person for a day. That's it. I'd say, I'm not saying like a Freaky Friday situation where the body swap. No, I'm talking about they get to go to another country um, or another you know, say, like, maybe the poor get to be rich for a day, or maybe the rich get to be poor for a day. This is to, this to uh, engage in in their in their uh, conscience. I, I'm, I'm very a uh, proponent of people understanding another person's perspective, like empathy and all that kind of thing. But that's a very good question. So everybody just to see another person's shoes, basically. If that makes sense. All right, any other questions, Q&A? If you can think like one thing, like one thing to ask like general questions, movie characters, all that kind of thing. I'm very into pop culture too. Pop culture, my thing. Alright. Um, if you could be a superhero, which one would you Oh man, that's such a good question. So you like a pre-existing superhero or just a person with a superpower? Um, like a person with a superpower. Mmm. Alright. But the answer is a, a second question, uh, I would be Spider-Man. Miles Morales, there's the Black Spider-Man, I'm just, I'm just saying. But, uh, if I had to have a superpower that's not spider-powers, because, you know, it's a little weird to have, you know, webbing come out of your veins. It's not right. So, I'm going to say I have the ability to fly, and I really hate flying and I hate heights, but I like flying. I would have been super strong, but then... You know, what if I accidentally like hit somebody and they get knocked in the street and I get or sued? Yeah. <laughs> or if I get a high five, they, they'll break their head. So, yeah, that's happened to me before. I mean, some, some kids that give me high fives, like, wow, they break their thumb. No, it never happened, but they really care. So, I'm saying super straight. Uh, I, you want self control, but, you know, you can't really avoid someone else trying to hit you and get knocked out. So, if I had laser, laser beam eyes, I don't want to burn the whole house, so no. No fire powers, no electrical powers, no water powers. Don't want anybody to drown around me. No air powers. I don't want to knock the. Uh, I don't know what 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 gets knocked out by wind. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So some yeah hurricanes. I don't want to cause a hurricane. So yeah, I want to just fly. I can fly for free wherever I want. And then unless the uh, what uh, um, the army they just notice a, a flying projectile or something like that. they notice me and they shoot me down yeah that would be terrible but hopefully I, I, you know I could I could evade it <laughs> The good, the good news is yeah. that if you are made of flesh, yeah. there is no detector for that. The, uh, the, like, the, military, that the military can detect only yeah. uh, right. objects that are metal, that but can it, reflect the signal. Right. But let's say they thought I was working for any government, and they just looked at me, Donald Trump, you know, he looks at they'll, me like, They'll probably make nets. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're like, we can catch him, or we can nuke him. So... They're gonna try one of those things. But 
Awesome question. Thank you. Okay, next question. I do have one thing to add. Yes. When it comes to the issue of destruction, hmm. how old are you? Fifteen. Eleven. Eleven. Fifteen. Hmm. All right. So some of you are teenagers now, and you are approaching teenage years. Um, one issue that's often a distraction for young people is boyfriend or girlfriend. You have to be careful to make sure that you know what your priority is. At your age, until about 20-something, your focus ought to be school. School is the way, the thing that you invest into your future. Many of you are going to live up to maybe 80 years old, maybe 100 years old. And your first 20 years are the major investment into that future. What you do will matter for the rest of your life right now. Which means the more events that you allow into your current life that interferes with that preparation for the future will hurt you. Because when you become an adult, it is more expensive to try and go to school. It is more difficult. If you talk to your parents, you ask them, would they want to go to school? They probably would say yes, but they wouldn't want to not go, go to school because they can't afford the bills. You can't pay the bills while going to school full time like you guys. So it's amazing how kids will go to school and want to spend a lot of time talking instead of doing their schoolwork. Yet, it's a very few years that you have to prepare for that long future. Now, let me explain. You get to be a doctor. You get to be a lawyer. You get to be a social worker. You get to be a nurse by this preparation. And you don't get many second chances. Once you are 30, once you are 45, you, what you did back there matters. Because if you fail to get your good grades for um, SAT, good grades in essays and all that, that hurts you. And the time is all you have. So this time that you got is so critical. When some people come in, they don't care. Don't let them interfere with what you know you have to do. So keep your mind focused, like, like he was talking about. But hey, I know what I have to do. And it's for these years that I must do it. You don't get to do it over and over and over as you get older. People are going to be looking for you to pay the bills. Okay? Any questions? <laughs> All right. Okay, that was, uh, I think,